Welcome to the first marvelous mini sode. I've got my coffee and I've got my water. And you can actually now visually see that I've got my coffee <clears throat> and I've got my water. So for today, what I want to talk about is kind of a little opinion or theory that has been coming to mind about the music of the James Bond era. Um, if you haven't already checked out the part one of our rankings video that we did with the film Fanatics, uh, you can check that out. I'll go ahead and put a little reminder deal here that you can click if you want to check that out real quick. Um, but do look at that because we go a lot more in depth on all of the themes that are in the Bond films. Um, but since we've had some time, since we did all the research and listened to all the music, uh, now that the dust has kind of settled and I've just been kind of thinking over it, you know, in the back of my mind here and there, I've kind of come to a certain opinion. And that, that opinion is, I think the scores, not just the themes, although the themes too, but the scores of the Daniel Craig era Bond films, so Casino Royale, Quantum of Solace, Skyfall, Spectre, and upcoming No Time to Die, hopefully, are actually the best scores in the entire franchise. So let me dive into why I think that is. But let's dive in a little bit and talk about this. So the first film in the franchise is uh, Casino Royale. Um, it's scored by David Arnold, who did the preceding three Pierce Brosnan films. So he's already kind of a veteran of scoring James Bond movies. Uh, with Casino Royale, it's sort of a soft reboot of the franchise. It's also sort of an origin story for James Bond. Uh, the cool thing is, you don't actually hear the James Bond theme until the end of the movie. So you don't get that quintessential James Bond theme that literally everybody knows, even if they haven't heard a Bond uh, or seen a Bond movie. You don't get that until the very end. Instead, what Arnold does is he takes the theme song, You Know My Name by the late great Chris Cornell, he takes that theme song and sort of the musical elements that make that theme song up, and he crafts a unique theme uh, for Casino Royale, for Bond himself. Not only that, he has some new musical material for Eva Green's character, Vesper, uh, the relationship between the two of them. He creates a lot of new music for Casino Royale. And it's, it's in a similar orchestral palette to the rest of the Bond franchise, but it's not exactly the same. Um, and so it's really unique that he uses that theme that's original to Casino Royale and uses it as Bond's theme until the very end when he really becomes Bond and you know he says the iconic, the name's Bond, James Bond line, and then you get the full blast Bond theme to end the film. So that's how he kicks off the era, and it's one of the best scores in existence, but definitely one of the best in the franchise. So Arnold returns for the direct sequel, Quantum of Solace, and even though, even though a lot of people don't love Quantum of Solace, I haven't heard a single person yet that doesn't absolutely sing the praises of that score. Because really what he does is he takes all of the musical ideas of Casino Royale and then builds upon them and does something, uh, like makes it the next extension of all that music uh, in Quantum of Solace. So it's very musically pleasing, even though some of the thematic and story elements may not pay off from Casino Royale quite as well as they should. Musically, everything extends and pays off and resolves exactly as it should. So if you just kind of take Quantum of Solace for the score, it does exactly what the film was intended to do. Uh, he also definitely blends in some of the... Um, he blends in some of the instrumental ideas that are thrown into Another Way to Die, the theme song by Jack White and Alicia Keys. It's one of the best sounding songs ever. Um, give it another shot if you don't like it. That's all I'm going to say for that. Then you get to Skyfall, and Skyfall's the darling of the Craig era, for sure. Um, Adele in Skyfall, the theme. She's the perfect vocalist for a Bond theme. Like, bar none, no one has a more like classy, classic, but powerful smoldery voice than Adele. She's perfect for that. Um, we get a new composer 
Thomas Newman. Now, I will say, I actually think, and this might be a hot take, I don't know, but I actually think Skyfall has the weakest score overall of the Craig era Bonds. And even that being said, it's still one of the best in the franchise. But Newman definitely uses a lot more music that just kind of serves as filler in scenes that's just in the background, you don't notice it, and it doesn't really musically do anything for the film. Um, That being said, he does incorporate thematic elements from Casino Royale, and he also includes Skyfall as a theme, and he begins to play with the classic Bond theme and Bond musical structures in the score itself more than the two films that came before it. So he's starting to uh, graft the Bond music of the Craig era back into the franchise at large. So it serves as this connective tissue to the rest of the franchise in a way that the two before it did not. Uh, Then you get to, up till now, the most recent film, Spectre, also scored by Newman, and it definitely has the most allusions to the classic Bond franchise themes and uh, orchestral palette and all of that. The theme song, Writings on the Wall by Sam Smith, you can you can go check out the podcast for my more full <laughs> breakdown of that. But suffice to say, the best part of it is Newman's underscoring of it. Uh, the instrumental under Writings on the Wall is incredible, and he uses that instrumental theme all throughout Spectre. On top of allusions to a couple of themes from Casino Royale, a little bit of Quantum of Solace, and definitely some Skyfall, and a whole lot of connective tissue to the rest of the Bond franchise music. And we can't really say anything about the newest one, No Time to Die, because it's not out yet. It's coming out very soon. I think that Billie Eilish's theme for uh, No Time to Die, which is titled the same thing, is the perfect sort of end point and culmination of the themes that came before it. I truly do. Um, You get little flourishes of every theme in the Craig era in that song. Um, And so I really like what they did with that theme, and I'm really excited for the score because the composer is Hans Zimmer, and he knows a thing or two about jumping into franchises and just taking the music up to a whole other level. So I'm really hoping that Zimmer will not only craft some new pieces that are awesome, but that he will do an incredible job of molding the other scores from the Craig era together into No Time to Die, because they really are advertising this thing as like the culmination of the Craig era. Everything has led up to this, all that, and I hope that that pays off musically, because so far, The Craig era is the first in the Bond franchise to all connect to each other. Uh, They all kind of tell one cohesive story, more or less. And that's only possible because of the music and because of how well these composers have tied all of these together. And so I'm really hoping that in No Time to Die, it will end up being like this perfect culmination of all the music that's come before it, while still being its own awesome individual piece. Um, And for all those reasons, because of how they connect all the films together musically with different musical ideas, that's why I think that the Craig-era Bond scores are the best in the history of the franchise. 